Hello everyone and welcome back to another LEGO Beyblade video. Today, I'm going to be showing you guys something a little bit different. Instead of doing a LEGO Beyblade review, which I've done way too many of, I'm going to be showing you guys how to build the LEGO turn system. And if you're unaware, that is what my primary system is called. So, I'm going to be showing you how to make it. So, here is a turn system bay. This is the classic Cyber Exo. And before we get into this video, I just want to give y'all a couple announcements. First off, we finally have thumbnails. Woo, it already took me, like, way too long. Like, it's been forever. I don't know why I didn't ver from my stuff, but hey, we have thumbnails now. Cool. Second off, um, I made kind of a system logo, and I think it looks pretty cool. I'm very proud of it. And it's unique, because it's not just, like, the Beyblade Burst Japanese logo with a silly picture in the corner, whatever the heck people use. And third thing is... Scythe Reaper has a frame. I don't know. I just want to put a glaive on here because it looks cool. All right, what was I doing again? Oh, yeah, right, systems. Okay. So let's get into making this thing. So you're going to want to start off with a 4x4 and a 2x2 plate stacked together like this. Next, you're going to want to add... What about my camera? You're going to want to add two 1x2s and then two 1x1s on like this. So this is like your base piece. Next, you're going to want to add these brackets, then a 2x4 like that. Then you want to place some more 1x1s in the corners like so. Then you're going to want to add a another 2x2 two two right there. Then you're going to want to add some 1x2 tiles of some kind like that so now we're finished with the bottom and this is how your disc will connect so you take your disc I just have a seven disc right here and the prongs slide in like this and then the driver keeps it secure so yeah next we are gonna focus on the top for the top, you're going to want to put down a couple of these brackets that kind of hang downwards or upwards, depending on which way you build your bay, stud up or stud down. These are stud down, therefore these are these hang over these. And this just keeps the disc a lot more secure, and of course, put your contact points there. So now we're going to get into the spin direction, which is kind of where you, um, like, you got to pay attention to, like, this part, because... Of course, my chips, they determine the spin direction, so you want to remember what's what. So, if you were to put the formation on the top like this, and like put some like 1x2s or 1x3s like on here to keep them more secure, if the formation is like this, then it is a right spin. If you were to change the formation like this, it would be a left spin. And if these were not here at all, it would be a dual spin. So, yeah, that's kind of how the spin directions work for the bases. And for the sake of this, we'll make it a um, right spin. That's the left spin. Oh my goodness. I I tried to record this video before, but it was so bad that like I couldn't even upload it because I constantly mistake the spin direction. Oh my goodness. But yeah, that's what a right spin base looks like once again. And a little bit of a disclaimer, this is kind of how to build like the skeleton. Like, of course, you put your contact points right here. And then right here, so yeah, this is kind of like the skeleton of the uh, layer base. So let's get into the chip. The chip is very simple in design. You take your circle plate, you put it onto this 2x4, and then add a 2x2 two two jumper at the bottom. And like this, then it is a dual spin chip because there are no protrusions. Putting the protrusions on sides like this, adding on your 1x1s, and then your... 1x2s like that. Then this would be a right spin chip because it perfectly aligns like this. And unsurprisingly, like this is your left spin formation. So these would be on the opposite sides and open right at that. But once again, for the sake of this build, we're going to be making it a right spin because, you know, they're very common. And then you simply place your chip into uh here so yeah that's how you make the skeleton of the chip and i think it's 
pretty like creative but also kind of strange how like people haven't done things like this before like made the chips determine the spin direction like i feel like it should be a little bit more common i do want to see some more people try to make systems like that or like this because i don't know i feel like it'll just add a lot of diversity to the chips because you, you usually see them as like two by fours but then again, the dual spins like that, oh my gosh, I'm going on a tangent. So let's get on to the drivers, which are literally so easy to make. I literally just took the Excel driver. You look at it from the side, you know what's going on. You have like the circle plate and then these kind of, I don't know what these pieces are called, but they're like one by twos with like a protrusion at the side. If you have um one by two teeth plates, then those work as well. And then you add your driver portion on here. And the maximum height for the system's drivers has to be five plates tall because if it were higher then the Beyblade would get off balance very very easily so yeah there is our driver and it's a basic lego connection you take your take your driver you put it onto here maybe you add some putty so there's a little more burst resistance and there we have the skeleton for the Beyblades and then you can just like add your own contact points onto there and whatnot and uh, yeah, that's basically it. So let's see how this thing, uh, let's see how it does in battle. Yeah, this will be fun. Oh, yeah, new stadium. Um, let's throw, like, a, this guy. Alright. Oh, uh, I don't know. And that's the video. Comment, subscribe, like, I don't know. I <laughs> don't